Warning, the Stone Age Gamer includes a lot of bad language. Cover your mother ears. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to episode 161 of the Stone Age Gamer Podcast for the week of August 4th, 2017. I am Chris Randazzo and joining me as always is glorious animated cutscene Dan Ryan. I, If we do not play a little clip of Bobby Roode's theme song Glorious right at this moment, I'm going to be real upset. Do you hear that, Evan? Do you hear that? That that message is for you. Bobby Roode, NXT. Glorious. Make it happen. Kikade's Pain in the Assathon is this weekend, so Dan and I thought it would be fun to discuss the games that everyone's going to be playing and how well we think they'll do. Actually, Dan and I didn't think it'd be fun. I said that's what we're doing, (laughs) and Dan didn't give a shit. (laughs) I, I had no input on this. I wasn't asked. I would have been okay with it, because you are right. I have a decided lack of shits to give. <laughs> but we, before we talk about Dan's lack of shit any further, here's your <laughs> weekly reminder that you can email us at mail at Just include the word Stone Age Gamer in the subject line, and you can let us know what you think of our show, what topics you would like us to discuss in the future, or just say hello. We always want to hear from you, the listener. So, Dan, how the hell are you? Oh, I'm okay, Chris. I'm all right. It's, uh, it was an interesting Puzzle and Dragons week. Some new uh, some new cards came out that I was very excited to get. My daughter pulled a uh, Yog Sototh, which is uh, one of the uh, Lovecraftian Godfest exclusives, and uh, he's like one of the strongest fucking cards in the game. Like it, it's just silly how overpowered this card is. Um, but that was on my alt account and not my main account. My main account, however, did pull Cthulhu, another one of the Lovecraftian monsters. So it was pretty, uh, pretty exciting overall. Well, that's a hoot. <laughs> I, it's oh man, I just you know, I haven't had time for anything. Too much work. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of time for game playing. I mean, I've I've played a little bit of Splatoon because uh, you know. I, I, I love playing Splatoon. Sure. And uh, I did... Um, there was a new story on Kotaku that I really wanted to to call out for being a particular piece of shit, which, I mean, honestly, <laughs> this is Kotaku we're talking about, so it's not like it's hard to call their work a piece of shit sometimes. Um, oh, here we go. So far, Nintendo's arms does not have legs. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> that funny. that was this article was an excuse to write that pun. It's um, It's not bad. I missed that one. I don't know how I missed it, but that's funny. I, I believe I've said it on the show before, but uh, and I think you laughed at it, but I've that's been, okay. <laughs> I've been drinking, <laughs> Chris. I usually do. Most of this is just through a you don't, haze. You don't, need to, you don't need to explain it. We all know. Oh, okay. All right. um, that's good. So this is the part of it. It's basically saying, like, oh, ARMS is like a one-trick pony. It's a... Uh, sure. Yeah, it sold, like, you know, over a million copies already, and it's a pretty big success, but nobody's talking about it anymore, like, the week after Splatoon 2 came out. So, yeah, no, no, nobody's really talking about ARMS right now, because Splatoon's the big thing. But the, the, their complaint... About the long term, uh, you know how this game really just doesn't have any long term playability. Uh, and I quote: "But in the end, Arms Fighter's only moves are punching, blocking, dodging, and throwing. So mm-hmm. basically, every fighting move, every fighting game ever, <laughs> every fighting game minus the kicking. Yeah, minus the kicking. Oh, so you can only do the things that you do in fighting games. <laughs> Clearly, this doesn't happen. <laughs> what a piece of shit." How dare they? Oh, Nintendo's supposed to be innovative. And no, they're just like, oh, we're going to take away an, an option to strike your opponent. How's that for innovation? You fuckers. Take it and like it. I bet you Mario's going to be in it sometime soon. Ah. Seriously. I, I Or Waluigi, look, I mean, you can... and instead of punching you with his arm, he'll punch you with his <laughs> long-ass mustache. Which would be fucking awesome. Oh my god, that is the best idea ever. 
<laughs> Waluigi with a couple of boxing gloves on the end of his mustache. Yep, make it happen. You're I welcome. I could love this idea. You're welcome, Nintendo. <laughs> Best idea ever. <laughs> I mean, they already said that they've got new character DLC coming, and it's all going to be free, like Splatoon was. So, yeah, yeah. Of course, nobody's talking about it right now. It's just, it the, the headline struck me as just so it's so particularly like, you know what I want to do? I feel like bashing Nintendo right now. And what a piece of shit of an article! Like, you could yeah, this that's, game is so limited great. by being a fighting game. Like, that's what it that's what it is, you jackass. The only thing you can do in Tetris. Is make the blocks go in a circle and then down. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. And then, like I the say. next article that popped, like m- like minutes later, the next article that popped up on Kutaku was talking about how Earthworm Jim's a piece of shit. <laughs> like, okay, so like a week ago, I swear to God, I I think it was Kotaku that made like a case for Cars Two being a really good movie. Or, <laughs> no, Cars Three, the newest Cars one 3? that's out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think. Or maybe it was Cars 2. I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't I just matter. I had to call this out just the sheer idiocy of complaining that this is a fighting game. I still dig it. You know, I'm not doing any online matches cuz I'm not great at it, but I'm still only like able to hold my own in level 4 matches. Level mm. 4 out of 10. And, you know, I'm playing Splatoon, but I'm going to get back to playing Arms as soon as there's more DLC for it and Got to get good. Gotta get good. Gotta and so get far, good, I'm Chris. just aight. Aight. <laughs> <laughs> I got aight. I didn't get good. <laughs> oh, God damn it. That's such a Other than that, my... That's such yeah, a Jersey... Jesus. Philly thing. I. I what? did spend all of last weekend... Uh, actually, all of Saturday, or was it Sunday? It was Sunday with uh, our good friend Matt Much, and he mm. was working on my computer and fixing things up, uh, so it, it runs pretty well now. But we also spent a decent chunk of time with the Raspberry Pi. Did he get the controller wireless, working? Wireless controllers still do not work on it. Wow. We cannot figure out why. There's got to be something in the uh, in the image that I downloaded for it. It is just it, has to be. because Is it possible that your wireless controller... Oh, no, because you, you said it works on the menu. Yeah, it works. I was going to say, like, is it possible it's just broken? <laughs> like, fuck, yeah, I don't no, understand no, why it'll work. God we tried it. several different controllers. Like, they'll they'll sync, they'll be great, and then as soon as you boot up a game, you just have no directional control. And it's just it's just got to be something in the image related to the way these ROMs are coded or something. There's just got to be something in there that is incorrect. So I'm going to wipe the whole damn thing and start from scratch next time I have time but we spent a long time figuring stuff out on there and i eventually did get it to start doing a few things that it wasn't doing like it wasn't doing famicom disk system games Mm -hmm. and now it does and that made me really happy because i finally got to play a little bit of the disk system version of uh, zelda 2 which i've always wanted to mess with because it's a you know it's it's just got these weird little differences like the water on the map screen animates and the music is pretty different uh it was pretty neato that's fun it is fun. I oh, was very did, happy with it. Have you tried punching it? I have. I've tried yeah? punching oh. and kicking it. Yeah. Mm. And um, well, also punching and kicking the air around it. <laughs> just generally I'm, being mad. I have I'm, cursed at it. I've I've talked sweetly to it. And, I'm fresh uh, out of shit. Then I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, I'm I'm all out of options here. But the the bulk of my week has been planning for the Pain in the Assathon, mm. um, which, as you've heard us mention on the show before, is the 24-hour live stream that we're doing this weekend, so t- teamed up with the Colon Cancer Alliance, and we're all going to be playing Pain in the Ass video games uh, for charity. So we'll be taking donations. In fact, we are taking donations right now. They are live as of uh, Tuesday this week. So if you want to jump in early and throw some donations our way, we would greatly, 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 greatly appreciate it. Uh, our overall goal this year is $3,000. Last year we hit $2,600, so I'm hoping we can do a little bit better this year. Um, granted, a 1000 of those dollars came from Stone Age Gamer, who have once again agreed to match up to $1,000. So if we make $1,000, they will donate $1,000. If we only make $500, they'll donate $500. But they'll match donations up to 1000 And so that, that gets us that gets us two-thirds of the way there. If we hit a grand, they give us a grand. We're already two-thirds of the way. So, Which isn't bad. 
I mean, yeah, not bad. I mean, you know, at the end overall, of the day, it doesn't really matter how we get it. It's all for raising money for the Colon Cancer Alliance. Um, I, I mean, I think it matters a little bit how we get it. There's, there's a couple yeah, ways we probably shouldn't get it, but we probably shouldn't be out there breaking thumbs. But really, I mean, nobody's intimidated by us. That's not especially true. Especially me. Especially you, but the first time you meet me, I'm relatively intimidating. That's true. I mean, you are an intimidating character. Which I mean, then, is probably... then I open my mouth and people go, oh, he's a fucking goofball. Like, and just, the mystique <laughs> I just is, want to hug him. <laughs> the mystique is totally gone at that point. But like at first... If you're scowling and, and, and smoking or, or wearing a hat of some sort. Yeah. yeah. Or even a hoodie. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll wear a hoodie to the live stream. You should. Definitely should. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to run down the list of games that everybody's playing. And we're going to talk a little bit about the people playing them and why we think the games are a pain in the ass and how we think everyone's going to do. So. Spoilers. S- not well. Not well. No. no. I mean, no. Except that, that, for you I, and I don't have extreme high hopes for a lot of this as far as completion, but I do have pretty high hopes for a lot of it being fun. Uh, so the first game, first up, is uh, from at 10 a.m., from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., 12 noon, as they call it, uh, is going to be me and Evan. Evan from the this week's episode podcast and just Geek Hate in general. Uh, and the two of us are going to play Contra for NES for two hours. Which is a long time to play that game. Yeah, it is a long time to play that game, and I think we're going to need it. Because here's the deal. Uh, I have set some rules in place. We're not going to use the Konami code for the first hour. Uh, (laughs) That's going to be a very frustrating hour. (laughs) Evan has not played this game in like 20 years, and I haven't played it in a while. I'm pretty sure my muscle memory is going to be okay as far as, like, I used to be able to beat this game on, like, one or two continues, but without the code. Yeah. So I, I feel confident that I should still be able to do okay. But the other rule I put in place was that one of us can't beat a level without the other. Mm. So if Evan dies four inches into the level, I can't beat it <laughs> without him. So when uh, Evan dies four inches into the level is what you're saying. That's, now, uh, Evan that's says pretty that, tough, man. It's going to be pretty tough. I'm probably going to play fast and loose with that rule at some point. I would have uh, to just, imagine you would. I um, Evan has been practicing a little bit, uh, which I, I told him not to, but he said he, he didn't want to embarrass himself too much. And uh, so he said he's, you know, he's, he's messed around with it for the last couple of days. He cannot get past the waterfall stage. Sometimes he can't even wow. get past stage one, but wow. uh, he, he cannot get past stage three. Just that's as far as he's gotten. Not a good sign, and, Chris. I suspect that that stage is going to be where we die the most. <laughs> Any Not, of those vertical stages, uh, it's it's going to be real tough to get him f- from from the bottom to the top. Started um, from the bottom, now we're here. That is not a good sign, my friend. But, you know, two hours of this, <laughs> two <laughs> solid hours <laughs> of uh, just... Oh, goodness. I am expecting some real good rage out of Evan. I, I, I feel that during this experience, I'm going to be pretty... Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I just got a... Uh... So Evan right now is editing uh, this week's episode of this week's episode. And um... <laughs> he's offering me choices in episode titles, which are right now, Danny is Blandy or Baloney is all the meats. I like bologna is all the meats. I th- I like it too. He was um he was criticizing s- somebody's sandwich choice and da- and he was over here when we moved and uh, <laughs> he was criticizing sandwich choices and when he was here we went to this really great sub shop here mm-hmm. and he ordered a uh, bologna and salami with like uh, bologna and salami dry with American cheese on a roll. That was it. Uh, Evan never gets to criticize anyone's <laughs> sandwich choice ever again. I, I, the uh, only way that that could possibly be worse is if he put Miracle Whip on it. Because oh, that, oh, God, like, oh. I know how you, like, I know how you feel about mayonnaise, but like. Dude, and I feel even worse about Miracle Whip. Like, mayonnaise, the realer it is, the more tolerable it is. But holy crap. We're going Miracle Whip. That's just like, 
That's imitation evil. That's like insultingly evil. <laughs> you know, at least regular mayonnaise is an evil I can respect. By the way, the current Splatfest in Splatoon 2 is ketchup versus mayonnaise. I saw that. That's kind of funny. I am staunchly team ketchup, and not just because mayonnaise is horrible, because, like, all right, so in the original Splatoon, yeah, those two char- characters, Callie and Mari? Yeah. Well, you've got these two new characters in this one, because, you know, it takes place a few years later, and that's how pop stars go. Uh, so they get these new two pop stars, and one of them is a really likable character, and the other one is this spoiled brat with vampire teeth that nice. just is awful. And uh, so she's team mayonnaise. And then the cool girl is Team Ketchup. So, yeah, fuck yeah. Team Ketchup all the way. Anyway, back to where we're going. B- back Contra. to Contra. <laughs> Contra. Contra. Purely so how, how far mayonnaise. do you think Evan and I are going to get in Contra? Oh, goodness. Um, Christ. I think the waterfall stage might be, might be a stumbling block. I think I, with two hours... Two and, solid hours. And you being there to coach him through it? I actually, I think you guys will get through it. Do you now? I do. Contra's not I, hard. I, I, it's it's kind of hard. There's some Contra, timing. Like, okay, I'm talking about the, you know, the, the brown stage and the, towards the end of the game where there's all the spiky walls that come out of the floor and oh, little yeah. spiky things coming down from the ceiling. Like, that involves some timing. You know, that's even, even that, though, a lot like, of memorization. It's true. Once, and I feel you like, hit, once you hit the second hour and you put in the Konami code, you're fine. Yeah, I, th- I, I think it might be doable at, at that point. But that really all depends on Evan's... See, I, Evan's a real wild card here. I have no idea what he's going to be able to do in Contra and how far his anger is going to take him. <laughs> because I feel like at a certain point, he's going to be so mad at the game that he's not going to want to learn anymore. Mm. But I do have good news. Dean and I sat down and figured out backup games for every single one of these games in case we finish them. Okay. So when you so and I he- speed run the next game in 15 minutes... <laughs> Because that's gonna happen. Yeah, keep dreaming. Uh, <laughs> but yes, if we if we finish this, uh, I actually I forget which one I told Dean to put on his uh, system, and obviously he should have both of them anyway. But we're either gonna move on to Super Contra or Contra Three: The Alien Wars. Mm. I kind of want it to be Contra Three: The Alien Wars because yeah. that's even that's way harder than Super Contra. Yeah, it really, really is. Super Contra, they kind of so they dialed it down a little bit. Yeah, just a, like it, it's not even like they dialed down the difficulty. They just made the weapons not suck. Yeah, like the flamethrower is freaking fantastic in that game. Yeah, it's just like now you don't shoot these slow ass little twirly ball things. Now you just shoot giant fireballs that explode when they hit something, which is Yay. great. That's what it is great. Yeah, what I want my fireballs to do. And uh, but Contra Three is so good. Mm-hmm. I love Contra Three. Mm. So yeah, I, I don't know that we're gonna finish it, but I'd like to. I'd like to hope. That in two hours of me playing playing uh, this game with Evan, that we'll be able to we'll be able to blow through it. Now, are you going to allow a substitute gamer? Like if Evan punches no. out and punches through the fucking television screen, <laughs> no, nobody's allowed to hop in. If if Evan actually like flat out refuses to keep going, like to the point where he's you know his fist is bleeding because he's done something horrible or he's murdered me mm. uh, which is also a distinct possibility he might just murder me in a fit of rage That's... I'm kind of fragile I'm not going to lie to you if he punches me with his full force I'll probably he'll probably put a hole in me he might he's a lot Evan's bigger a, than you he's, he's a big guy he's a pretty strong guy he's a pretty strong dude uh, so if that is the case if one of us dies or is just physically incapable of carrying on I, I, I would allow mm. I, I would allow Okay. Somebody else. All right. So moving on to the next game. Let's see here. Uh, From 12 noon to 3 p.m., three hours, Dan and I will be attacking Comic Zone for Sega Genesis. We're going to fucking need it too, man. It's not going to happen. It is. Like. I can't imagine a world where I get good enough or either one of us gets good enough at this game to finish it. It's going to happen, Chris. This game is so freaking difficult. Like, 
just unfair. It, it's it's unfairly hard. It's it just really yeah. is like it is. <laughs> it is mean. It is it is mean spirited. <laughs> it actively hates you. In, in ways that, like, people always talk about games just like, oh, this game is so friggin' hard. This game's ridiculously hard, like Ghosts and Goblins or Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Like, there's a certain logic to those games. Like, yes, right. they're absolutely ridiculous, but y- you know the rules, and the rules make a certain degree of sense. You get hit by something, you take damage. End of story. Comic Zone is like, well, everything hurts you, even the good stuff. So. Yeah. There are barrels in your way. You need to break those barrels. Every time you hit one, you're going to lose some health. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And really, fuck you, game. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean? I I have to figure out a way to get through these barrels by breaking as few of them, hitting them as few times as possible, because this, like Double Dragon 3, is a one-life experience. You you get one shot. (sighs) So the it's way I look at this is the two of us, happen, Chris. the two of us are just going to go back and forth. Like you take yeah. a turn, then I'll take a turn. And you know, we go until it's a game over and that's that. Like when we were kids, we're going to do lives or levels. Lives or levels. Yep. Lives that's levels. a good plan. Yep. So lives. Holy crap. Pretty much. Yes. So lives. Yeah. <laughs> look, I can beat level one pretty soundly and I can beat level two most of the time. I think the farthest I've gotten in the game is level four. I have no earthly idea how long this is. I think it's only five levels. Really? I, yeah, I think. I Oh, God. I can't remember. I think it's five levels. Maybe six. I don't know. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Yeah, it's not fair, and I just don't see it. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we are going to try. God damn it. Yeah, well, we got three hours, Chris. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, like, it's another game that's, that's just very much about memorization. You know what I mean? There's a way to progress through the game where, like, you can skip certain, like, encounters and, like, maybe you'll live a little Mm -hmm. bit longer. And, like, you don't have to break every barrel and you have a rat. That's the thing. (laughs) uh. It was was, was, uh, criticized for being too hard and too short. So maybe it isn't that, um, maybe it isn't that long. Comic Zone. Comic Zone. So um, the game being criticized for being too hard and too short. Yeah, but it does only have six levels. Six uh, levels, so okay. It is, I guess it is possible. It it's is technically really possible. Not. It's really not. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, at, the, at the request of uh, several people, if we do finish this, the game that we have to follow it up with is Echo the Dolphin. Oh, motherfucker. We are not <laughs> finishing this game on purpose. I'm going to get... Oh, uh, no. No. It's for charity, Dan. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's fine. You can just sit and criticize it while I play. Oh, God, will I? I hate that game so much. It's the dumbest game ever made. It's so fucking stupid. I'm a dolphin and I jump. Woo! (laughs) Oh, don't forget the noise you make. (laughs) And there's crystals, Dan. Crystals. I I think there's a spaceship at some point. (laughs) Jesus, I will fucking read you a guide. (laughs) So you can play it. There's, I mean, we're just, we're not finishing Comic Zone. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I, if I thought for a minute that we'd actually finish Comic Zone in three hours, then, uh, I think Dean and I tried to finish Comic Zone on a stream once, and I think it went for like an hour and a half, and we didn't get anywhere. So, twi- I mean, twice that time, I just don't know. Maybe I don't know. Like I gotta, I'm gonna put in a little bit of practice. I'm not gonna put in too much practice because I want it to be organically fucking shitty. But because that is the point, it, it is supposed the point. to be a pain in the ass. But I haven't played this game in forever. Like I need That's to. The thing I have, I've played this game pretty recently. <laughs> we were playing it at um uh, Garden State Comic Fest. We set up a, we set up at the booth and we just sat there and played Comic Zone for a while. Mm. Me and Dean, it was terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I and that's the thing. I love this game. It's I so love cool. this game. It is 
How did they not make a sequel to this game? How did this not get anywhere? Everyone hates it. Because it's, it's just freaking it's mean. impossible. But you know what? Battletoads got sequels, and that game's impossible. Mm, that's true. But Battletoads, you could at least uh, Game Genie your way through. I mean, I suppose you could Game Genie your way through this. It was a Game Genie for Genesis. Yo, you want to hear something really weird? And I didn't know this existed. There's a Game Boy Advance port of Comic Zone that was released in Europe. Really? Yeah, it showed up on my uh, my Raspberry Pi. I was uh, poking through the Game Boy Advance game. I was like, Comic Zone? Is it any and I easier? I loaded it up. No, no. <laughs> it's pretty similar, you know, just kind of pared down and a little uglier because it's Game Boy Advance. But sure. It was, uh, yeah, it was weird. Very, very unsettling. All right. I mean, we're we're gonna give it, we're gonna give it a go, Chris. We're gonna give it the old college try. I have three hours is a long time. Yes, it is. All right. Next up on the list. After that, from three to four, I continue to play games because. I don't know. I apparently I hate myself. I just wanted to keep playing games from, from the start. You're bad at uh, scheduling. That's that's I your am. problem. Me and Ferg from the Atari Twenty Six Hundred Game by Game podcast, who will be joining us live in person, which is so exciting. I'm so super stoked for that, and him to also still be there from five to seven, which we'll get to it a bit. Ferg, um, holla, holla, bread. I need it. I need I need some Ferg bread in my life. Please. <laughs> Please, Ferg. <laughs> oh, good lord. Do you understand? And does Ferg understand how upset Tiffany will be if I go to a place where Ferg is personally there and I don't come back with bread? What do you mean come back with bread? You think he's going to bring bread that we're not going to eat? Yes, I got to bring some for Tiff. Do you know what's going to happen? I'm going to get divorced, Chris. <laughs> not counseling. <laughs> Fucking divorced. You're gonna. Get the, you think there's divorced. gonna be delicious food in Evan's house when a bunch of us idiots are gonna be there playing games for 24 fucking hours and it's gonna survive? Yes, because Ferg is gonna bring a special loaf just for Tiff. A special loaf just for Tiff. A special loaf just for Tiff. Well, anyway, I really Ferg hope he listens and I, to this on Fred. I hope so too. <laughs> Ferg and I are going to be playing uh, Sneak and Peek for Atari 2600, which is a game that I have never played before. But as Ferg described it to me, it is basically hide and seek for Atari 2600. I, I don't I I'm don't not know. sure how that works. I'm not sure how that works either. Like, do I have to leave the room? <laughs> I hope so. And I, I don't know how this is going to work. And I'm he is the one who suggested the uh, sword quest game last year oh, for God. me. So bad. Which was absolutely awful. Yeah. Which I mean, I knew that going in. Yeah. Uh, and it was a great choice for the Petathon because it was a complete pain in the ass to play. Mm -hmm. Um. So I have some pretty high hopes for this. Not knowing much about the game, I don't know how to say how far we will get. At, is there a progression in this game? I, I have no idea. What do idea. you even do in a hide and go seek video game for I, Atari? I don't know. I mean, like. Have you watched anything about this? No, like I've you... purposely avoided it. I the only thing I know about it, and I've I listened to the episode that he did on his show about this, but it was a long time ago, and I remembered like nothing about it. Yeah, it's weird, man. I am excited. Uh, that's the other thing. Ferg is going to be there for the bulk of the day. So he's probably going to be around while we're playing Comic Zone. Might even be around while we're playing Contra. And he's going to stick around for a while after that. Like, this is this is kind of his day. He's he's on his way to somewhere else. And he's going to hang out at Evan's house for several hours with us, with us, which I am so excited about. I think we should have a, uh, like, a Ferg button. Where, like, we can tag Ferg in if we need a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, uh, yeah, we we got to think of a good name for it. But yes, we should be able to tag Ferg in at any given moment like, for any given game. If somebody presses like the Fergatron 3000, Ferg has to play for like 10 minutes or something. I'm calling my Ferg line. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's a much better joke in here somewhere. I'm not sure where it there is, is, but God damn it, there's one in it, here. But so if you, I mean, if you're some out, like if you're new to this show, like, I don't know if we get new listeners or what. <laughs> <laughs> if you've never listened to Ferg before, he is just this wonderfully jovial personality. 
and he's got a great laugh. And we also have this other guy named Jengis who uh, works for Geekade, who does uh, the You Shall Not Pass Go podcast, who also has a very infectious laugh, a very different infectious laugh. But getting those two in the same room at the same time, laughing at something is going to be an experience. It should be a good time. I, I, I am so excited about this this particular bit, because um, I've never actually played an Atari game with Ferg before, which I'm pretty stoked about. And if by some chance we get completely, totally tapped out of joy and or entertaining <laughs> things to do with hide and seek. The backup game for this is uh, combat oh. because I've always wanted to play combat with Ferg. And uh, I think that'll be super fun. Well, bucket list, man. It's, it's also something that I want to be able to do with Ferg. I probably won't be on the show, but it, Ferg doesn't have a smartphone. So he hasn't gotten to try uh, Space Invader, uh, Arkanoid versus Space Invaders yet, mm. which I think he'll really love because it's fantastic. Yeah. So um, I hope to be able to show him that at some point. Also, if possible, I'd love to be able to, like, I really want to play Overcooked with Ferg at some point <laughs> because I freaking love that game. That's We're- the thing I should have mentioned at the beginning the top of the show. Overcooked finally came out on Switch. Me and Karen played it for like one night, and it was absolutely outstanding. That game's amazing. Well, all right, Download then. it, Dan. All I right. Do it. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get there. All right. Next up, Dan, 4 to 5 p.m. It's a Paper Cuts reunion. That's right. With Dan, Dean, and Mr. Matt Much all playing Puzzle and Dragons. Dan, tell us about tell us about what it is you're doing. Well, see, they uh, they introduced oh, probably like six to eight months ago um, at this point, multiplayer in Puzzle and Dragons. And it that introduction made a lot of dungeons in the game that were previously re- uh, relatively difficult to clear because of certain spawns or just you didn't have the right stuff on your team or whatever. It, it made them way easy. Because now all of a sudden you could partner up with somebody and all of your stats doubled like you shared health and you shared actives and skill boosts and just all the different stuff. It, it made shit really easy. So then they put in a three player mode where you don't share actives, where you go in with just your team like you were playing solo mode. But basically what it does is it's basically like playing solo mode with three people and you share the board. Very few things cross over. Like if, if we're playing, if I have a team that has full skill bind resistance, which means I can't use my, like, you have to have five skill bind resistance. Because again, this is an RPG style game too. So, you know, to use your active skills, um, if you get bound, you can't use them. Most of the binds come in their 99 turns. So if one person out of the three of you does not have full SBR and they get skill bound, all three people get skill bound, which pretty much means your run's over at that point. Like if you can't use an active skill, it would be like if you're playing a Final Fantasy game and you get up to the final boss and you can't use Meteora and it's like, well, okay. I'm not going to be able to ping you down enough like just with a little... Choo choo! Like I can't just tap you with my sword twice for the next seven years. Like that's just not going to work. So like <laughs> that kind of makes it a pain in the ass because that shared across things. But like if somebody puts up a shield to to prevent some damage, that shared across all three players. Um, but what really makes these dungeons a pain in the ass is that. Like, you wrote it up on the website, and for those of you who haven't read the website, there there's a character, there's a card in Puzzle and Dragons, Light Metatron, um, and Dark Metatron to a lesser extent, but Light Metatron had been a joke for like a year and a half, because it was a card that had gotten buff after buff after buff, like it was always like, we're giving it this much more health, and this much more attack, and this much more recovery, and another Awakening, and we lowered its active skill, and it sucked. Like, the card, it was just a shitty card. It was buffed more than any other card, but it was still shitty. So in the three-player arena, they took the shittiest card and gave it just the most defense in the world. Like, you can do damn near 10 million damage per card, and it'll take away one hit point. Fuck you. Yikes. 
<laughs> Fuck you. So like, so now this card that was just a joke for a year and a half is now this gatekeeper. That, I mean, obviously there are ways around, and if, uh, if we do this correctly and we bring the right stuff and everybody survives, we should be able to get through it. Um, but what's going to be fun about it is that Matt, Mr. Matt Much, has not been preparing for this at all. Um, I don't know how much Dean has been preparing for this. I mean, we've, we've done some things together, but not what we're going to be doing here in three-player. And, uh, like, I've gotten through the dungeon a few times with playing with other people. But uh, Matt's going to get nervous. <laughs> like, we, we know this, and that's going to be fun. I'm probably going to get nervous and fuck shit up at that point. Um, it's going to be a pain in the ass. It's going to be a pain in the ass to get through these dungeons. Um, to, or at least to try and get through three-player arena. Because, look. The other three player, the Cosmic Trinity, where they added these three Lovecraft bosses, um, there's no fucking way. We're, we're just, we're not getting through it. I, I, didn't, I didn't pull Yog, Yog Soto this weekend on my main account, so we're not getting through it this weekend. I, I spent 75 stones, so that's, uh, you know, a good chunk of rolls. It's five stones per roll. Um, I spent a good chunk of rolls trying to get Yog Sototh so we could uh, try and get through that, but it did not happen. And my alt account is nowhere near capable uh, of getting through that. So <sighs> it's gonna be f well, it's gonna be fun. That sounds like a hoot because I have little to no experience with Pad. Uh, so I'm expecting me and Ferg to be sitting on the couch next to you guys, just heckling like just just. Heckling and or laughing. It it should be a good time. And like what what's gonna be even weirder about it is that you'll only get to see one of the phones. Um <laughs> you know, like one one screen will be displayed, so like you'll get to watch what it's like when you play with other people because like orbs just move on your screen and you're like, oh fuck, this person's so much better than me. Like that's usually <laughs> how I feel when I play through this game. <laughs> like I watch people doing shit and I go, Oh god, you're like that's way better. Son of a bitch. I should do that. And then I try and do it and I can't. Are you saying that you should get good? I should get good. 700. It's get. It's get. get. G -I -T -G -U -D. I, G -U -D. I don't live in get the, good. I don't live in the South anymore, <laughs> sir. I will say get good. Thank you. It's, I mean, I, we, I'm fairly confident we'll be able to get through it. Like, really? Dean and I can handle the bulk of the work. Matt needs to really stay alive to to help us out with the uh, like in the support role of the you know like team building. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it, you know what I mean. Like you, you, Matt's going to be there, and he's he certainly he has good enough teams to be able to do some uh, significant damage on some of the floors, and he should be able to sweep a couple floors and whatnot. But. We really need him to have his defense break ready, or else we're just not going to do enough damage. I don't have the shit to do it. <laughs> I've tried. Well, I'm looking forward to watching that. It should be fun. I don't know what we're going to do if we get tired of that, though. I mean, we've only got an hour, but I don't have a backup game. Maybe we'll play Flappy Bird for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that game's a fucking pain to the ass. <laughs> Tell you what, sold, mm. <laughs> sold. You're playing Flappy Bird. If you <laughs> if you finish Puzzle and Dragons before the hour is up, you're playing Flappy Bird for the remainder of the time. <laughs> Damn it, we better go slowly through this dungeon. <laughs> Forty five <laughs> minutes of Flappy Bird. <laughs> oh, love of God, that'd either, be so terrible. Either that, or like we'll just download the Fidget Spinner app. <laughs> we'll just play that for a while. Cat piano. <laughs> It'd be fucking riveting. <laughs> so this next one, before we go on break, we'll talk about one more. Uh, this next one is the most literal pain. I, I, I don't even remember how I came up with the idea, but I just, I thought to myself, you know what I want to do? <laughs> I want to see Dan on a power pad. <laughs> the fucking stupid idea. So we're playing from five to seven. On Saturday, we're playing world-class track meet for NES on the fucking power pad. And it's going to be the Olympics, so we're going to play every event. And I think you can go up to eight players. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so we're going to grab as many people that are in the room that are willing to participate. I believe by this time the Fuggernaut will be with us. Uh, so we'll have Jonathan Fuger, you, me, Ferg, Evan, Dean. I don't know. Well, and anybody who's in the room, I don't even know who's going to be there at that point. But if we, I want to gather eight people together to play the friggin' Olympics in world class track meet and watch a bunch of overweight, out of shape people jumping up and down on a power pad. I, I think that's, I think that's what joy is, Dan. I think that's, I think that's what happiness is. It's either joy or knee surgery. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> Fucking knee surgery. Rupture. Evan's got downstairs neighbors too. Oh, that's good. Fuck those guys. <laughs> yeah, we should we should warn them. Before. I, you know we should invite gonna... them up. We should... I think Evan doesn't like them very much. So, oh well, so this is good ha- then. Yeah, I think he's kind of happy about this. So world class track let's meet. also cook curry. Yes, the whole time. <laughs> oh god. Fuck you. So I love for curry. anybody unfamiliar with world class track meet, this was uh this that stadium events game, this is the same game. This is what it was rebranded to when Nintendo released it themselves. Uh, it was a pack in with the power pad, which is the mat you put on the floor and jump on. Um, and it's like an Olympic style game and it's all running events. Where you, you know, you run, you jump, and you do it all in place with these giant dots, and uh it's it's kinda great. I played the heck out of this game when I was a kid. I love busting this thing out. It is so ridiculous, and uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun to, to, to play this game with all you guys. Now, uh, we do have... I did list this for two hours, because, I mean, there's all sorts of stupid shit that you can do in World Class Track Meet, but cause I really don't know how long a full-on eight-player match of this game is going to take. I have no concept of how long that takes. So... Uh, if we do have time left over, we will be playing Short Order, also on the power pad. Mm. Short Order is uh, from Short Order and Explode, which is a single cart that has two games on it. And Short Order is basically Simon, except you have to play it with your feet. And you can't just... Um, the uh, the get on your knees and pound it with your hands trick doesn't really work unless you're you've got really good balance and reach. <laughs> because the, the there's you know like Simon there's four uh, different things to choose from but each of those four things is two buttons on the power pad yeah so basically you're jumping you know on these different things while trying to remember uh, how to assemble a hamburger for a giant pig and oh, it's God oh it's it. wonderful so so I mean either way this is going to be absolutely fantastic because. Uh, Simon like, the, these memory games at least to me are a huge pain in the ass I'm not good at them. And I feel like all of us taking turns while trying to build like a 99 story hamburger, like that's just that's just a, a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it's not going to go well. <laughs> recipe. Yeah. I, oh, I see what oh, you did boy. there. It's yeah, you. That was, that's that's why you're the host. Plan that. It is. It is because I just came up with that off the cuff. That's it's why, it's why that's I don't host any right there, uh, any podcasts anymore, Chris. <laughs> you just don't want to live in my shadow. I just your shadow is so so long and so dark. It's not so, just so a long, dark. long shadow, but like you blot the sun, sir. I, I've is, been told it is a staggering, staggering shadow. So this is one of the things I am just most excited for about Saturday. I I cannot wait to play Power Pad with a bunch of people because I I've I don't think I've ever done a full eight player Olympics before. Even when I was a kid, I think the most kids we had over to play the game was like five. Mm-hmm. And uh, I am really really jazzed about this because it's going to be so stupid and so kind of competitive. And people are going to fall. Things are going to get broken. People are going to get broken. There will be tears. I'm excited. Good times, great oldies. Cool ninety eight point three. <laughs> Thought it was ninety eight point one. I think it was ninety five point one. Was the ninety five point one W W A Y V? They were the like light rock. No, that's light light rock ninety six point nine W A Y V. What we're talking about, kids, is a radio, <laughs> which is where you used to hear music, <laughs> like the Benny, back in the old days, like the Benny Giles band. Miles Back when days. we used rotary phones. <laughs> Back when we only had 60 channels on our cable box. Oh, the dark ages. Oh, we had to watch scrambled porn. Oh, God. Is that a tit? 
whatever. I'm pretending <laughs> it's a tit. <laughs> All right, we're going to take ourselves a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the rest of the games of the Pain in the Assathon. Uh, you're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. And now here's a look at some of the other original content available right now at geekade.com. First up, the latest World War II movie to hit theaters comes from the director of the Dark Knight Trilogy, I believe that's how it's pronounced, and has earned high praise from critics. Geek it's triology, Dan. Triology. It's triology. <laughs> triology. As my customers, as my customers at Game uh, Funko Land used to say, y'all got that Mortal Kombat triology? <laughs> no, sir. And or madam. No, it do not. <laughs> Jesus. Christopher. Geekade's Chip Garrison believes that this three-part three-part epic deserves every good word. So oh, sorry. I I should have read further ahead. <laughs> Geekade's Chip Garrison believes that this three-part epic deserves every good word said about it and does justice to the historical events whose story it tells. Find out what makes this story so special in Dunkirk. World War II through the eyes of Christopher Nolan. Haven't seen it. Everybody just talks in Batman voice, though. It's really... Even the women. <laughs> Everyone's got eye makeup and cowls on. It's, it's really weird. I'm going to fight Nazis. It's perfectly all historical. It's, it's very historically accurate, except for that part. It was a very weird, weird choice. <laughs> Hitler's got a bomb. Oh, he's killing Jews. And Hitler's just Bane from... <laughs> It would go very poorly for you. Uh, you think Germany is your home? I was born here, lived in it. <laughs> raised by, by it. by it. Shaped by it. It's made me a man with a shitty mustache. <laughs> Fuck, oh, I really God. want to see this movie now. <laughs> <laughs> is Thomas Jane Hitler in this movie? Wait, is Thomas J It's not even Thomas Jane. What the fuck's his name? Thomas Hayden Church? Tom Hardy. <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church is Waluigi in Arms the movie. <laughs> oh, God. Like, Tom Thomas Hayden Church just as Waluigi isn't good enough. But with the fucking boxing gloves on his boxing mustache. <laughs> Sanguine off his shitty mustache. There's Thomas Hayden Church very dramatically saying, Wah! Wah! <laughs> Luigi! <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, oh, it's so much funnier if you know who Thomas Hayden Church is, which not a lot of people do. He doesn't get much work nowadays. It's a shame. <coughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> next. In today's fast paced world of Thomas Hayden Church references, <laughs> sometimes you just want an old school beer, an easy drinking American pale ale to watch wings to. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> American pale ale. Man, I, just, I can't stop making wings jokes. <laughs> they, it was why it was Thomas Hayden Church. But uh, there's a joke about wings on Mystery Science Theater, one of the new episodes. just had me just freaking rolling. And it's not even that, it's not even very much of a joke. It's just like they kept saying, shut up, we're watching wings. And they just sit there and watch wings on the TV. It's fucking why? I don't understand. This is great. Because wings is great. Wings is great. Uh, let's see. Uh, an easy drinking American pale ale with an extra kick of hops. And what better game to play while drinking this beer than one that's all about moving forward and blowing shit up? Learn more about Dan's latest beer and video game pairing in Bits and Brews, Carton, Hop Pun, and Contra. I love the name of that beer. I do. I love the name. So should, should I be drinking that beer at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday while playing Contra with him? Absolutely. It's relatively low alcohol. It's absolutely a breakfast beer. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Such a good name. 
hop pun because there's so many breweries and all of the breweries have like cute names for their IPAs and whatnot and all their hoppy beers and they were just like no hop pun get it funny fuck yeah Carson you guys are awesome finally if you know anything about comics you've probably heard about the recent Marvel storyline Secret Empire in which Captain America is a villain a lot of people hate the idea but welcome to the D-list, Jonathan Fuger has a different opinion. Click over to see him explain why he thinks this unpopular story arc is some of Marvel's finest work in shocking but satisfying empire located in the think tank. You can catch all this great stuff plus tons of other articles, videos, podcasts, and more right now at geekade.com. We are back to finish talking about the games that we're going to be playing at the Geekade Pain in the Assathon in conjunction with the Colon Cancer Alliance. Because as my friend Chris pointed out, everybody poops, but not everybody does it at their own volition. Also with uh, special guest uh, Thomas Hayden Church. Yeah, Thomas Hayden Church. He'll be there. Big fan of the show. Big big fan of the show. I hope Hold he on. is. I want to make sure I get that. that uh, I want to make sure I get that quote right. Chung. What big Anymore. big fan of the show? No, his his uh, his thing he said about everybody pooping because it was very well done. Mm. Everybody poops, not everybody poops on their own terms. There it is. <laughs> <clears throat> so funny. yes, that's that that's the tagline that we'll use next year. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we were we left off at seven o'clock, and from seven p.m. to ten p.m. on Saturday. Uh, welcome to the D-Lists and, uh, and the Mutant Musings podcast. Jonathan Fuger is going to be playing a game called Mega Man Unlimited for the PC. <clears throat> uh, he asked me to play this game, like, I don't know, almost immediately after last year's Pain in the ass -thon. He said that sounded like a really good idea. Uh, I don't know a lot about this, but I have heard that it is very hard. Uh, he told me that he, in order to finish the game, he'd need about four hours, so I gave him three. Because <laughs> why not? Because <laughs> why not? Uh, and it's like, it, it's a fan game. It's old school Mega Man, but made by f a fan community or a f person or something like that. I don't know the whole story behind it, but it's uh, it looks neat. I cannot wait to see him play through it. It's got some uh, cool looking also... bosses. It does. And he's going to be joined by, he's going to be doing the playing, but uh, Patty, his uh, co-host from Mutant Musings, is also going to be there. And uh, the two of them have some very, very filthy mouths. If you've, if you've never listened to uh, the Mutant Musings podcast, it's, uh, it's, the, it, it's the kind of show that would make me and Dan blush, as far as the, uh, I don't know if it was quite on, if it's quite on between two beards levels of uh, profanity, but it's, you know. We'll see, like. I edit myself on this. I I constantly am thinking the whole time, how many times have I said fuck? Have I hit my quota yet? Like, I do. <laughs> I, I have a little tally sheet. Like, I have a whiteboard right here next to the... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I do, keep though. an exact count. You know, like, I, I try to keep it to a relatively listenable <laughs> level of filth. And, um... I feel like that's all going to go out the window on Saturday. Um, yeah, probably. I mean, you're bringing beer, right? Uh, well, probably. I was expecting Evan to provide it. He is the True. host. I, I guess you do eventually have to drive home. But uh, Yeah, well, you know. I'll take a bus. So, <laughs> Mega, Mega Man fun. Unlimited with Jonathan and Patty. That's going to be a, that, that's gonna be a hoot. Um, I like those two. They, I find them entertaining. And... Uh, I, I made Jonathan play Mega Man: The Wily Wars last year, mm -hmm. and uh, he had a, he had a, he had a rough time with that. That was uh, he he um he offered to play Mega Man One, which he always has had a problem with. Because it's uh, he's hard. A huge Mega Man fan. Yeah, yeah. Mega Man One is hard, and he actually kind of blew through Mega Man One and the Wily Wars in his time allotted. 
So then he moved on to Mega Man 2, because Wily Wars is weird Sega Genesis remakes of the first three uh, NES games. And watching him continuously lose to Woodman was <laughs> hilarious. Who loses to Woodman? Well, in Mega Man The Wily Wars, they changed him around a bit. You can't jump over his leaf shield when he throws it at you. Well, that's just not like, fair. It's pretty easy in the NES game. It's doable in the Genesis version, but it's way more like you need to be pixel perfect to not take damage when he throws that leaf shield at you. It's kind of brutal, and it really it really did a psychological number on him because he's like, you know, Mega Man 2 is the kind of game he could beat in his sleep. Right. But not anymore. <laughs> Not on Sega Genesis. It was weird. Um, I freaking love Wily Wars. It's so bizarre. Um, I love 8-Bit Mega Man. I can't believe I'm going to get to chill out and watch somebody play through like a, a new 8-Bit Mega Man game I've never seen before. Because as far as fan projects go, there are numerous fan Mega Man 8-Bit games. But uh, this one has a pretty decent reputation from what I've come to understand. So yeah, this I'm one, pretty jazzed about it. This one's uh, a pretty well uh, pretty well respected. So Indeed. <clears throat> so right, from let's a, uh <laughs> let's get to the lightning round here we are we are yeah. going long so closing out the day of saturday from 10 p.m to 12 a.m uh dave and jengis from the you shall not pass go podcast will be playing the lion king for super nintendo they have two hours to beat this fucking game i think uh i think you should amend that they will be playing the i just can't wait to be king stage for <laughs> one hour and 54 minutes because it'll probably only take them six to get to that one and they if will even not get that past first it. stage the the pride rock stage is just it's a joke it's barely even a stage there's nothing to it and then it just moves right into that you know that monkey tossing game and if you don't know what you're doing that is really hard i don't know if two hours is long enough to figure it out honestly i can't wait to find out this was this was their request like, oh, I want to play Lion King. I'm like, cool, go for it. I love that game. (laughs) Go nuts. There was a time when I could just blow through that stage. Like, I just knew it. I I got it down to the point where I just friggin' knew it. And uh, that's not the case anymore. Mm -mm. I'm looking forward to watching somebody suffer through it because it is always... uh, Lion King for Super Nintendo is a very good-looking and sounding game. Um, It's just impossible. it is, and it gets a little bit easier as it goes on. Uh, it was front loaded with difficulty, it, 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 intentionally. As a matter of fact, yeah, it was front loaded yeah. in difficulty. Like I think we talked about that on the show. It was, a, it was an interview with uh, somebody who worked on the game a long time ago, and and uh, and and the, it came out that it was intentionally designed to be front loaded with difficulty to combat the rental market. So look it up; it's a really fun story. Um, so that's going to be a hoot. Now the. Uh, for me, my, one of my favorite things about this this evening is going to be from midnight to 4 a.m. I will be attempting to beat Zelda The Wand of Gamelon for Philips CDI. Hmm. Last year, I beat uh, Link Faces of Evil. It took me a little bit more than the four hours, al- uh, four hours allotted. This time, we're going straight to the walkthrough. Because uh, there was a while there where I was just trying to figure out the game on my own. And Which when it, I realized it, it just that that doesn't a, make any sense. It's a complete exercise in futility. Yeah. So I, I want to get through this game. And uh, so, oh, I forgot to say, if they do wind up beating um, Mega Man, Un- I, I'm pretty sure they're not going to beat Mega Man Unlimited. If they do wind up beating uh, Lion King for Super NES, uh, we are moving on to Mickey Mania for Super NES, Ooh. which is also a very hard game. Uh, but very Disney themed, so I thought that'd be fun. And uh, if I do wind up beating Wand of Gamelon in before the four hour time is over, I'll be moving on to Hotel Mario for the remainder of the time. <laughs> Good luck. <sighs> Yay. Uh, so, Zelda Wand of Gamelon, one of the Unholy Triforce games, uh, the absolutely awful, unbelievably awful Philip CDI Zelda games. I am so excited to play through this because. I had a blast playing through uh, the, uh, the the Link Faces of Evil last year because it was, I mean, it's horrible. It's oh, it's very awful. frustrating. It's awful. And it's just a very poorly made game. Um, and this one I have very little experience with. Like Link Faces of Evil was the one I knew more about right. because it was the game with Link in it. And um, Wand of Gamelon came out same day, and it's just kind of this companion But stars piece. this it's, wand. 
<laughs> Named Gamelon. Yeah, it's weird. It stars Zelda. <laughs> I get to run around as Princess Zelda to save Link. And uh, boy, oh boy, it looks a lot like Faces of Evil. It's it's essentially the same controls and everything. So it's gonna be a it's gonna be a shit show. Yes. And I'm excited. <laughs> How f- do you think I'm gonna finish it? I think you will. You you I have a certain you have a certain amount of dogged determination when it comes to this this just utter nonsense and four yeah. hours with a walkthrough from the very beginning because you're also playing it on the modded console too right with the regular controller with a Super Nintendo controller yeah. yes I I think I think four hours is enough time what's uh, Hotel Mario no <laughs> no I mean I think that has, that has like a ton of stages in it yeah and it's like that game's not terrible, but it's a little grating on your soul as you play. It. Yeah, so. it's 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 garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. So you know, there's that. Yeah, so that's gonna be a hoot. I'm pretty st- pretty stoked about that. Uh, then we get we get kind of an hour off uh, because we are heading over from four to five a.m. We'll be transferring over to our friend Brandon from the interdimensional interdimensional RSS unofficial Rick and Morty podcast. Live Which is via a, satellite. Live via via internet satellite over to Hawaii. Uh, Interdimensional RSS is the number one rated Rick and Morty podcast. That is a legit thing that is real. I think there are like number 40 overall TV podcasts on iTunes, mm-hmm. which is pretty awesome. Uh, Brandon and Tra- uh, Brandon and his, his partner Travis also do Apathetic Enthusiasm. Uh, we just have Brandon for the event, and it's just for an hour, but he is going to be playing The Binding of Isaac. That game's... Which a- I've never played. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's a twin-stick shooter um, that is so just twisted and weird and strange, and I believe... I could be wrong, but I believe it's procedurally generated... So like I've there, heard that. there is no planning for it. Like Yeah. And there's there's just weird shit in that game. It's very strange, like rusty hypodermic needles or power ups. Um we talked about it on the show a long time ago when it was a PS plus game, but like it's the game where your mother locks you in a closet and punishes you for not being uh Christian enough and like it's just it's this really messed up game. I'm excited. I won't that, be up to watch it, awesome. but you know. Yeah, I I mean, I'll probably be up because, you know, I don't know, I'll just be awake. Right. Or maybe I will have passed out from exhaustion after <laughs> after uh, playing Wanda Zelda. I don't on. know. <clears throat> I don't know, but uh, that's going to be fun. Uh, Brandon is always fun to listen to. Listen to. I, I, I like his shows. Yeah. So a uh, big thank you. Big thank you to him for helping out. Then after that, we move on to the, the coveted 5 to 7 a.m. time slot. Oh, it's, it's which, the golden... To the golden yeah. hour. Bless, uh, bless Patty for taking this. So yeah. the, the, the the tables will turn. Patty, uh, Jonathan, and Patty from the Mutant Musings podcast. Uh, this time, Patty is playing the game, and she is going to be playing X Men for Sega Genesis, which is at my re- awesome. That was my request. That I, I'm hard. so excited. Not only is it hard, I don't know if she's actually physically going to be capable of beating it because I believe there's a point in the game where you need to reset the game. And we're playing it on a Raspberry Pi. Mm. I don't know if you can emulate that. That's like, a I just pain don't in the know ass. if it works. <laughs> it's fucking mean is what it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know how this is going to go, but she's never played it before. And I am so excited because uh, my buddy Greg got this game. He was my friend who had a Genesis when I was uh, a kid. And man, I was so excited because I was a huge X Men fanatic and back then. It looked then. great. And and it looked sounded great. Like a and Genesis the whole game. soundtrack. I, this is like this is the epitome of the Genesis fart noise soundtrack. Oh, God, Everything yeah. sounds like it's coming out of an ass. It's so metal. Oh my god! It's so ridiculous. Uh, th- this game is friggin' cool, man. And like. You start off, it's it's all a simulation in the the danger room that's gone mad, and I think Ahab's in it at some point, and oh my god, I cannot wait. I Because like, these guys are X-Men fanatics, and I don't know that... E- I know Patty's never played it. I don't know if Jonathan's played it, and that's going to be hilarious to watch them go through this game mm-hmm. as huge X-Men fans and just be like, what the 
what <laughs> the hell is happening right now. I'm so excited for that. I hope I'm awake for it. I'll wake you up. Thanks. Thank okay. you. No problem. No problem. Um, so, uh, and then after that, we get the piece de resistance. This is this is what I'm I was waiting for. The seven and to ten spot. The seven to ten. This is how we're closing it out, unless of course we reach our stretch goals. But the last official game that we will be playing. Oh, by the way, if she does manage to beat or just physically get to a point where there is no progress left to be made in X Men, mm -hmm. she moves on to Spider Man and X Men Arcade's oh, Revenge. That's not all right. That's not nice. that game's mean. That game sucks. Yeah, it's it's awful. It's just awful. So yeah, uh, from seven to ten a.m., Dean will once again be tackling Bubsy in Claws Encounters of the Furred Kind. Dean will once again lose his mind trying to beat that game. Yep, <laughs> I cannot wait. That was so much fun last year. Just the the sadness. Like, I he was pretty demoralized after Ghosts and Goblins. But, this but is, sure, but that's to be expected. Yeah. Like, Ghosts and Goblins is a game that's going to kick your ass, and you're kind of expecting it, but Bubsy was a game for children. Like that, it was that so wasn't made demoralizing. for gamers. It's just poorly designed. There's a lot... There, there are things to like about this particular Bubsy game, and it's the one and only half-decent Bubsy game. Yeah, there's lots Not of... Not even half. Like third decent. There's multicolored balls of yarn. <clears throat> Those are fun. There's great music in this game. There it is. does have a legitimately awesome soundtrack and some some mechanics that are sound. But uh, boy oh boy, I mean Bubsy gets a bad rap for a reason. The first game is is a is an all right you know action platformer that sure. is deeply flawed, and then everything that came after that kept getting worse. Yeah. <clears throat> It's yeah, it, it, just worse and worse it every is the, single iteration. The epitome of why we no longer have mascot games. Yeah, it's it's like somebody made a game out of Poochie from The Simpsons. It's just... It's so, I have to return to my home planet now. Goddamn Poochie reference. <laughs> oh, I gotta go watch some Simpsons now. Don't blame me. This I voted for Coda. <laughs> I certainly feel like if Dean doesn't do it this time, this will be the third charity event that Dean attempts to beat Bubsy on. And and it's I feel like it's just going to break him and it's going to be so much fun. I to hope watch it does. I, I love just... him dearly, but I hope this crushes his spirit. Just beyond repair. Yeah. Just the it's it's and that's the that's the great thing about this is that if he happens to beat this game, and I know he has been attempting to practice it a little bit because mm -hmm. he's he's been at this for a while. Bubsy has been his nemesis for a good long while now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If he does manage to beat Bubsy, he's flying right into Bubsy too. That's so mean. That's so mean. It really is. And I thought about making him fly right into Bubsy two for Game Boy, which or is. Just That's, even worse. That is worse. But um, much worse. Now nah, we're going with the Super NES version of Bubsy Two. As a small mercy, he can have <laughs> the most playable version of Bubsy Two, because uh, emulating the Jaguar Bubsy game just wasn't all that easy. And uh, I'm not bringing a PlayStation for Bubsy 3D. No, no. Next year, though. Next year, somebody's playing the Jaguar Bubsy game. Oh. Nobody should play the Jack Warp. Fractured game. furry tails. Um, oh boy. Oh boy. Because you can't have a you can't have a pain in the assathon without Bubsy. I know. Well, we should have the new Bubsy game by next year, so we should, but we don't know if that's gonna be a pain in the ass. We don't know it, yet. It it's gonna be. Yeah, it's it's gotta be. It's good. But so that... more people should know that there was a game between Bubsy and Bubsy 2, and it was Bubsy and Fractured Furry Tales. And it was freakishly awful. Horrendously. It was haunting. There are, it it's, if you want to see a game with little to no redeeming value, it's that game. Everything TJ Miller says to Deadpool in that scene when he first shows him <laughs> what he looks like, those are accurate descriptions of Fractured Burke Tale. Yeah, it's filth. 
of the, of, of the highest order. Filth and filth. Larm and filth and bleh. yuck. So real quick, uh, if we, we do have some stretch goals. So if, for every $100 we make past $1,000, we will add another hour to the marathon for up to four hours because we're only human. <laughs> Uh, and the games that we have lined up are Explode. We'll bust the power pad back out and play the other half of Short Order to Explode, which is such a bad idea at that time. Oh yeah, but when we're all tired, like a game that's basically designed to make you fall over, shit's getting broken. Um, Battle Toads for NES, which is impossible. Some, it is impossible if you're playing two player. It is legitimately impossible yep. to beat. Uh, and Overcooked on Switch because that game. That game multiplayer is really a delight. Uh, just you have to work together, and it's Overcooked's amazing. <laughs> I love that game. I'll be watching. I'll be there, crying, <laughs> looking forward to sleep at some point, which probably won't come. No. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's the pain in the assathon broken down bit by bit. Uh, there is also an art auction going on right now. Um, for Evan some really awesome, of, uh, awesome pieces of artwork. Yeah, Evan got a handful of uh, comic book artists to um, do some video game related art and put it up on eBay. And uh, all the proceeds from that, 100%, uh, at, we're, we're going to personally cover the, uh, the eBay costs. So every piece, every single dime that the final bid goes, toward, goes for is going to go towards our Petathon goal. And uh, like there's a great Scorpion and Sub Zero up there. Uh, there's a Rick and Morty Fallout Four piece. Um, there's, there's a there's this really great Balrog that uh, if uh, and my birthday is coming up in October, so if anybody wants to, uh, you know, bid on that and send it over to uh, Geek Eight HQ, would be uh would be awesome. So there's a bunch of really cool art up there. Uh, they, they they were all donated to, donated to us for the cause, and uh, I'm really excited about that. So. Check out all this stuff. Check out the links in our show notes, and and come watch us suffer for at any point during the uh, twenty four hours this coming weekend. We, and give us your we money. Will be suffering. Give the colon cancer alliance your money. Don't give it to us. Don't trust us with your money. No, that's, well, that's trust a bad me idea. with your money. We're from Jersey, don't, Chris. We're good don't with listen money. to Dan. <laughs> Nobody from Jersey has ever done anything shady with money. Ever? No, never. never. Mac and Mako's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's delicious. I don't care. I don't even give a rat's patoot. Not even one. Not a single patoot has been given. I'm sorry if you hear giggling in the background. My children have come downstairs and they find they're listening to us record, which is if you've noticed my language has has been cleaned up quite significantly. A rat's patoot. And they, you scoundrel, they have both found the word patoot to be exceedingly funny. It's also, well, to be fair, it is legitimately hilarious. It is very funny. It is also 10 o'clock, and both of them should be in bed. But whatever. Well, while Dan goes to figure that out, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's our show. Join us next week when Dan and I will be concluding our summer series with Karnov and Chris Dallas. Once again, you can get in touch with us at malikgeekade.com, as well as all flavors of social media that we inhabit. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Instagram at Geekade, subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels for all our latest video content, and follow us on Twitter at the underscore Geekade. You can also find us individually on Twitter. I'm at Geekade Chris, that's Geekade K-R-I-S, and Dan is at Geekade Patoot. I'm just kidding. What is, what is Dan I, I should be changing it to Geekade Patoot. You um, should. At Geekade Dan. See, this is the great thing about kids. I can just say patoot for like the next week, and it's going to be this that you can hear in the background. Children, I, I like that you're you're telling them like the, to to shush while I'm reading this thing. Like anybody listens to this part at all? I know. It's I'm like that fucking guy, the BBC guy with his kids busting in. They're all doing some Darth Vader bullshit behind him while he's trying to record. 
And the potty mouth is back. It if really you're interested is. in more it's information late. about anything we discussed here tonight, be sure to check out our show notes. And while you're at it, you can also subscribe to this and any of our other wonderful podcasts on iTunes or Stitcher, where if you're super nice, you can leave us a review because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. We'd also like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making this show listenable for all you folks. And we'd also like to thank Mark TDK Knight for our show's theme. You can check him out on SoundCloud and Bandcamp or his website, which we have a link to again in the show notes. Always remember to keep your eyes on geekade.com where we do lots of interesting stuff all the time. That's it, everybody. Oh, I Thank like that again. one, Chris. Keep, yeah, stay with that just, one. I didn't write it down. I've already forgotten what I said. We, we do lots of inter- interesting stuff all the time. I like that one. All right, cool. Write it, write it down. No. We'll, we'll, we'll say it. No. <laughs> just, <laughs> That's it, everybody. On behalf of Dan and myself, keep playing games.